Hello, my name's Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to talk about how you can get started with Keyboard Maestro. Now, Keyboard Maestro is an automation application for the Mac that I've been using for probably the last year or two years, and I absolutely love it. As an automation geek, I really like setting up systems where I can streamline my workflows and make technology make my life easier. Now, Keyboard Maestro is an automation tool that works on a trigger action system, very similar to if you've used tools like Zapier or IFTTT, if this, then that in the past. And so what I'll walk you through is some common types of triggers that we, you might want to use, common types of actions that Keyboard Maestro has, and I'll show you some examples from my account uh, to give you some ideas of the kinds of things you can automate. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. So let's get into it. And I'll start by just explaining the interface for you so you understand what's going on. So on the left hand panel, we have this column called groups. These are basically just folders for the different macros or automations that you can create. So I've got a couple of groups for things like here are some shortcuts that I've created, these sort of custom shortcuts that do different things. I've got some miscellaneous macros and things here. I've got a group for window management, moving windows to different sides of the screen and that kind of thing. So basically groups are just folders for your different macros. In this middle column, we have the macros. Uh, so each of these is basically like a workflow that we can automate. So let's look at an example here of uh, when an app opens, turning on do not disturb. And so then on the right hand side here, this is the macro itself. Um, with all the triggers and actions, and, and this is where I set up my macro. So let's talk about some of the common types of triggers and actions that you can use, and then we'll look at some examples. So I'm just going to click this plus button down the bottom, and I'm just going to create a test macro. Now, the first thing you do is you set up a trigger. The trigger is what is the event or what needs to happen for this macro to run and for it to then perform the actions that you've set up. So I'm going to click this button here and I've got all sorts of different types of triggers that I can use. One of the most common ones that I use is the hotkey trigger. So this is basically a way of using a keyboard shortcut to initiate and start your macro. So I could say maybe I want to use shift option command L. You know, that could be uh, a trigger. And I could even say when that is pressed or if I hold it down or when I release it, if I tap it once, if I tap it three times. Keyboard Maestro is very powerful and you can um, customize exactly how that trigger works. Some other types of triggers that I think are very useful is the application trigger. So maybe when a, an app launches, you might want to do something. Like when I launch, let's say, ScreenFlow for recording, I could have that um, be the trigger to start my automation. And I could say when ScreenFlow activates, or when it launches, or when it quits, um, or if it's active, again, lots of different um, sort of smaller options in terms of how that trigger works. A couple of other triggers that I think are useful. There's one here, which is the time of day trigger. So maybe I want this macro to run on specific days or at a specific time during the day. So maybe at the end of the day, like at four you know, p.m., on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I could have this run and maybe it sort of starts some kind of end of day routine or something like that. Or maybe I want to do a trigger when a USB device is connected, like maybe when I plug in a hard drive, so I could put in my hard drive name in here, that could be a trigger to go and do something. You can even set up you can even set up triggers for when your wireless network changes. Maybe when you get to work and your, your Mac connects to the particular wireless network, that might change applications or windows on your screen. So go through this list. As you can see, lots of different options in terms of the types of triggers that you can use to initiate your workflows. And then down the bottom here, this is where we can set up the actions. So this is where we program and tell Keyboard Maestro when that trigger happens, this is what you need to go and do. So some of the common actions that we can use are, for example, activating a specific app. So I can drag that in here and I could say activate, let's say, you know, Safari. And I could say 
all windows, or I could say reopen the initial window if I have multiple windows open. And if it's already at the front, what do I want to do? You know, I could leave it at the front. So, um, you know, that's my action. I can say when this keyboard shortcut happens, you know, launch this app. And I can string together multiple actions. So I could do something like um, move the window. So I could say move the window and I could actually, I've got some pre-built options here. I could move it to the left side of my screen or I can move it to, uh, you know, the top half of my screen. Um, all sorts of things I can do. One of the cool things that Keyboard Maestro can do is it can even move and manipulate the mouse. Obviously not the physical mouse on your desk, but the, you know, the virtual mouse on the screen. So I could say, I could specify coordinates here, you know, pixel coordinates on my screen and say move to this point on the screen and I could click or double click the left button, the right button with a modifier key and I could have it perform that mouse click on the screen. Or if I wanted to take this a step further, I can even have Keyboard Maestro click a specific image. So let's say I'm over in um, Asana here and I want to change the assignee. If I just quickly screenshot this little assignee thing here, I could drag that image into here. And so what Keyboard Maestro is going to do is it's going to try and find that image on the screen and it's going to click it's going to move the mouse to that point and then click that that image. So let's have a look at that in action. Um, I've just modified my macro here. I've put in a hotkey trigger. So when I press uh, Shift Option Command P, I'm going to have Keyboard Maestro move the mouse to this found image, and then I'm going to have it click. So if I go over here to Asana, you can see there's the th there's that part of the screen up there. So if I go Shift Option Command P. You can see it moved the mouse and it clicked that image. So that's a really useful little way, a uh, little, little feature that I've used quite a lot to program in custom shortcuts and things into Keyboard Maestro. So I think the best way to understand Keyboard Maestro is for me to show you a couple of examples. So here's one that I use quite a lot, which is when an app is opened, Keyboard Maestro will turn on Do Not Disturb on my Mac. So I've got a couple of application triggers here. So when I launch Zoom, because I'm on a, a video conference, or if I open GarageBand, because I'm recording a podcast, or if I open ScreenFlow, because I'm recording a video, I don't want any notifications on my screen. So either of those application triggers will trigger keyboard, this Keyboard Maestro macro. What it then does is it pauses for a second because I just want to give the system a second for the app to launch properly and not be overrun by doing too many things at once. So I've actually put a pause in here. I've then programmed in a notification that says do not disturb is enabled. So I'll actually see that notification come in and it's just kind of that visual confirmation so I know that this has worked. I then have another pause and then I type the keyboard shortcut, uh, which is, oh gosh, it's control shift option command D and that is the keyboard shortcut that turns on do not disturb on the Mac. I've got a the opposite application as well, uh, the, the opposite um, uh, macro as well. So if I quit Zoom or GarageBand or ScreenFlow, it basically does the same thing. It gives the system a second, uh, two seconds in this case, a chance to quit and then, then it performs the keyboard shortcut again to turn off Do Not Disturb, and then it shows the application Do Not Disturb has now been disabled. Let's just launch Zoom and see what happens. There we go, you saw the notification came in, Do Not Disturb is enabled, uh, and you can see up here, Do Not Disturb has in fact been enabled on my Mac. If I then quit Zoom, it'll get, we'll have the pause for a couple of seconds, and then there we go, Do Not Disturb has been disabled. And if I check here, yes, Do Not Disturb has in fact been disabled. So I think that's a really nice simple example that shows uh, just a simple workflow rather than me having to manually do this. When I launch specific apps, I'm not gonna get any notifications. So that's really nice. So here's another example. Uh, speaking of Zoom, actually, one of the things that I want to do on Zoom sometimes is to mute my microphone. Now there is actually a built-in uh, shortcut to do this. I think it's Shift Command M or something. I actually would just prefer to use a function key. So what I've done is I've got a hotkey trigger here, which is F14. So rather than having to do that other shortcut, I can just click F14 and it will mute my mic. So the way this works is I've actually set up kind of an if then condition here. So I have this big window which says if all of the conditions are true, do something. 
So if the front window is Zoom, in, in other words, if I've currently got Zoom open, I'm not on my email or something, if I'm on Zoom, Zoom will activate and it will then do the shortcut Shift Command A. Sorry, it's A, not M. Uh, that is the shortcut to mute the microphone. If the front window is not Zoom, nothing will happen. So I've set it up that way so that uh, I can reuse that F14 shortcut. Maybe if I have a different app open, I don't want it to open Zoom and um, and try and mute if I if I'm not on a call. So I've built it into this into this decision tree, into this conditional logic tree, so that this will only work if I have Zoom open. I've also created another macro for quickly searching for things in Mail on the Mac. So similarly, again, I've used a hotkey trigger. When I do the Option Shift Command F shortcut, what uh, I actually what I first do before I do this shortcut is I select some text. So I've got the text highlighted. I then press this keyboard shortcut. The first thing um, Keyboard Maestro does is it copies that text that I've selected. It will then activate Mail, so it just goes to Mail. It pauses for half a second just to give the system, you know, because um, the window actually moves, so I, I actually need to give it half a second. I then type the shortcut Option Command F, which puts the cursor in the search field at the top. It then types the delete key because if there's already some kind of search condition in there, I want to delete that first. And then Keyboard Maestro will type Command V to paste. And so that will paste in the text that I have copied. So let me show you this macro uh, working. So if I go to mail quickly, you can see I've got pool miners just typed into the search field. So I've already got a search results screen open here. And then if I go to pipe drive, what I can do is I can highlight this uh, email address here. And then I'm going to do my shift option command F. And it's going to activate mail. It stripped out that previous search and it pasted this new address in here. So now I've got the search results for that new query in here. So again, rather than having to manually copy, copy, navigate, click, press, paste, I've just got one keyboard shortcut that does the whole thing for me really quickly. And so that's actually an example of one of the things I do quite a lot with Keyboard Maestro is kind of just customizing my own shortcuts. So those little things like that, I don't have to perform as many clicks. I can just perform, I can set up the keystrokes and have Keyboard Maestro perform a number of keystrokes for me really quickly. And one of the really useful things I do with Keyboard Maestro is I've programmed in here a number of window management macros that let me move the window that I'm focusing on to the left, to the right. I can do half the screen or a third of the screen if I want as well. And this is really useful uh, at my co-working space where I have a big ultra wide screen. I can have a number of windows open on the screen at one time. And I use these macros to move things around really quickly. So in this case, if I want to put a window um, on the left half of my screen, I can do the shortcut Control Command Left Arrow. And then really here, all I'm doing is there's just one action in this macro, which is to move and resize the window to the left column. So if I do that now, Control Command Left, it moves it to the left. Control Command Right moves it to the right. If I do Control Option Command Left, it will put it into a third. Control Option Command Down will put it in the middle third. Control Option Command Right will put it on the right third. Actually, this isn't quite working correctly for this screen um, because this is more optimized for my, my ultra wide display. But you get the idea. I can move things around. So I, th I find that a really useful way. If I want to have a number of windows open, I want to have mail, pipe drive, and a document open, I can use a couple of hotkeys to get my windows set up just the way I like really quickly. And so that is a bit of a look at Keyboard Maestro. As you can see, on the surface, it's a very simple tool. It just works on that sort of trigger, trigger action system. If you've used tools like Zapier or IFTTT in the past, I'm sure that you're going to be pretty familiar with how to get started with Keyboard Maestro. What I would say is it is the kind of tool that requires a little bit of playing, playing and experimenting with in order to learn and to come up with ideas in terms of how you can use it for your workflows. So if you've got a couple of hours at the week and, you know, sink some time into this and very quickly you'll, you'll come up with lots of ideas in terms of how you can use it. And uh, you'll get to a stage like me where it's really cool when apps open or I can use shortcuts to do things really quickly. And I really feel the difference when I'm working day to day. I really notice that I can get things done a lot quicker using a few simple commands in Keyboard Maestro.
If you ever need help as well, you can reach out to the Keyboard Maestro uh, community, their community forum. There's a great um, group of people there. If you ever get stuck, that are very smart, much smarter than I am, that can help to troubleshoot uh, any of the macros that you're working on if they're not quite working correctly. Obviously, feel free to leave me a comment below this video as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.